So in last episode, we started with 12 colonists that had zero in everything, but each one of them has a burning passion for one skill. And they all also have great memory. They're all fast learners and they're all too smart. In the end of the last episode, we completed a quest for the new expansion, giving shooting the title of Yeoman, which allows him to use this psychic amplifier. And doing that gives him a new ability, Pain Block. This allows him to block pain pathways in the target's brain for a short time. This can allow a person to move and act even with grievous injuries, which would normally incapacitate them. Using this ability causes him to gain entropy, and if his entropy gets too high, it can result in long-term health consequences, so we're not going to want to use it too much. Shooting psychic abilities are only level 1, and as he gains more psychic levels, he should gain more abilities. As for the base, here's what we're looking at. There were a bunch of urns scattered around the map, so we just brought them inside. And our barracks is not looking too bad. It's slightly impressive. We're having everyone sleep in a barracks for now, as we haven't really had time to give them their own rooms. Side note, some of you more pro remote players will notice that the space is very spacious and at 112 that should only be quite spacious but we're using the mod realistic rooms and actually if you're a more seasoned room world player you should be using this mod anyways just because the game's definition of what makes a large room doesn't make sense in relation to like how big the colonists are like if you imagine yourself in the position of one of these colonists this room is absolutely huge and it's not as obvious until you look at like their bedroom sizes and i'll get more into that later we finally finished complex furniture and the main thing we can build now is beds it did cost a bit of extra research it should have only costed 300 because our tech level is low. The easiest way to boost our tech level is just to research the lowest tier techs like beer brewing because we don't have many low tier techs left to research. So far we've been able to level up everyone's skills except for animals. At the end of the last episode there was a beagle that entered our territory and animals tried to tame it a few times but failed and I think the beagle got eaten by something because it's not on the map anymore. We did have three donkeys enter our territory though and unfortunately they are all males. We will have animals try to tame them anyways though as every taming attempt will give him animal skill and yeah we failed taming the first donkey at 19% chance but we did gain a good amount of animal skill and the higher that animal skill is the better animals we can tame after researching complex furniture we build a few more rooms the first one over here to the left is the kitchen where we're having cooking make meals we got him to level 4 cooking before we started making any meals and the way we did that was we had him butcher animals and that will raise cooking skill you don't want to have a really low level cook cook meals because up to cooking skill level 3 the chance to get food poisoning is higher than if they were just to consume it raw. And that's not even factoring in like how dirty the environment is. If the environment where the cook is cooking the meal is dirty, that chance will go up even higher. As far as who we're giving bedrooms to first, we're going to focus on people that are more important. Like we want to make sure that cooking has a good mood. Shooting is also really important. Intellect is our researcher. We don't want her to have a mental breakdown and construction as well. You also may notice in the middle here that plants and artistic are sharing a bed. And it turns out plants is actually the lover of artistic. I did not set it this way. It was just random, I guess. This is really nice though for multiple reasons. A, we only have to make one room for both of them. B, if they do go to bed at the same times, they will get this Got Some Love and Moodlet buff. And this thing will stack quite a bit and it will make both of them really happy. They also get the Opinion of My Lover buff for 8 bonus mood. And as you can see, their moods are really good. Plants and Artistic are both almost full on mood. On day 9, we're actually at now, we got an event where Stone wandered in and Stone has an insane amount of burning passions. She's like all of our colonists combined because she's also a fast learner and she's a psychopath which is a great trait for somebody that's going to be doing a lot of combat as they don't mind seeing people die. She is a pyromaniac though which is one of the worst traits as far as I know. I've actually never seen this in action and to relieve stress she will go on random fire starting sprees and that will happen more often if her mood is low. So once we do tamer which right now we only have four in animals it requires six to be able to tame her. We're going to give her a really nice room because we do not want want her to start random fires. We could also just arrest her and turn her into a prisoner, but I think the taming method might be better, and we're getting pretty close to six animals. Animals currently has four, and the main thing he needs right now is some food that he can tame animals with. We've been planting a lot of rice in this rich soil, and it's been growing really fast, and we're going to start harvesting it. Animals can use that rice to tame with. We did already end up taming one of the donkeys, and we have a pretty good chance of taming them. We failed at a 31% chance, and we can only do it, I think, once every like half a day. And oh, it looks like three more male donkeys wandered in. 
which is highly unfortunate. Can we just get one female so we can breed these things? Whatever, we can start taming these things. And these ground runners as well are actually really cool. They are all females though. I don't know why we can't just get a mix. It's either they're all males or all females. No breeding allowed, I guess. This is a family friendly channel. These ground runners only have a skill taming requirement of two and they're actually really cool. When we do tame one, I'll show you guys exactly why they're so cool. And yeah, we have a pretty good chance of taming these things too, 27%. So yeah, yeah, we should be able to tame one pretty easily. And Animals has already capped out his daily XP. He got 4k XP already today from trying to tame all these animals. And yeah, his skill is going to be going up really quickly now. Well, not today because he's capped out, but just in general, his skill is going to start going up really fast. So it's around 1pm on day 11 and we're currently getting raided by 5 dudes. These guys all do look pretty low tier, but like Gray, for example, has 9 melee. Bren has 6 and he's a jogger, so he moves really fast. And like we don't really have anyone besides shooting that's all that good at fighting. Shooting's got 11 shooting and we made him a recurve bow it's actually a good one that will give us kind of an edge because these guys just have short bows and the recurve bow does have three more range than the short bow and it's a lot more accurate at medium range but what is he gonna do end up getting off like two shots and he's just gonna get overrun pretty close by to where they're raiding from though there is an ancient tomb that we can open and inside the ancient tomb there is a bunch of spilopedes and a mega spider as well as some pretty nice items we'll get more into what's inside later the main thing though is we want to figure out a way to aggro the raiders to these insects and like these spilopedes are actually leaving that's nice and yeah it looks like raptor and gerbil are actually clearing out these spillopedes for us that's really nice of them i'm hoping these raiders are going to piss off these insects and they can just duke it out looks like their aim is really bad though they've not been hitting any shots at all and here we go the tribes people of the red cod goo crew are beginning their assault and yeah they're fighting these spillopedes Looks like this mega spider is coming out to fight them too. And where are they going? Okay, the mega spider was running away and it was kind of scaring me, but it came back and now it's fighting them. While they're duking it out, we're going to have shooting come in here and well, I guess we can't grab the items. I'm not sure exactly why we can't pick up items. I wonder if that's a mod that allows you to pick up items. That's actually so crazy to me. And like, yeah, if we set up space for it, we could haul it, but I don't think we can pick up multiple items and like put them in his inventory. Pretty sure that's a mod. I also don't know who's gonna win this, so I'm not sure if I want shooting to help out the tribes people or help out the insects. It looks like Gray already went down. He didn't get killed, that's really good. And it looks like they are leaving now. There is still three insects up though, which is not good for us. Let's capture Gray and let's save him. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention that exactly 16 hours ago, we accepted this quest, Savage Animals. And the quest was in 16 hours, they're gonna send eight manhunting infected arrow fleets at us and we gotta clear them out. And yeah, here they are, literally moments after we got raided. These things don't seem too tanky though, and they're not that quick either. It shouldn't be too hard to deal with these. Well, here they come and it looks like they're going for our donkey. Oh no, donkey three is getting destroyed, but I guess that's okay. We can use it as like a tank. And wait, did they just explode and then kill each other? Well, yeah, one exploded and then it did a bunch of AoE damage and killed the others. These things apparently can throw stuff too. And oh no, death of Donkey 3. He died from burning. Well, can we get an RIP Donkey 3 in the comments? I think if it wasn't for Donkey 3, someone might have got just exploded on there. Throughout all that mayhem, we did end up capturing Gray, who does not have that much resist, 25. Social's also been working up her social skill and talking to melee a lot, and that has got her social up to 5 now. She's getting a lot better at lowering resist when she talks to prisoners. But now Animals has 6 in Animals, and we're going to try to have her tame Stone. Tame filled at 27% chance though, that's actually not that bad considering the minimum tame skill requirement that we need to tame stone is six i was thinking the chance was gonna be like more like 10 percent but yeah that's not bad from that battle earlier a lot of these insects are still wounded like this mega spider is wounded it has a moderate blood loss and it lost a bunch of consciousness so it's moving slow and its legs are tagged that's also part of the reason why it's moving slow but yeah we're gonna have shooting come down here and try to take well i guess i went back inside and we aggroed both of them on shooting. He missed both of his shots, but the good thing about these bugs is they won't aggro that far, I don't think. Like, yeah, it just stops, and then we can shoot it. And I think we can just free shoot at it, at least until we hit it, then it will probably charge. And, oh, we actually knocked it out. We go hit the Mega Spider too. Mega Spider does not like that we shot at his friend. And wow, no wonder we knocked out the Spilopede. We hit it in the head and we gave it a brain scar. That thing is done for good, pretty much. When it wakes up, it's not gonna be moving very fast. That scar is permanent. Few more hits on the mega spider three in a row i think that was this thing should be going down soon and there it goes 
After finishing off all the insects, we're going to finish off the hives as well. If we did maintain them properly, then we could have a steady stream of insect jelly coming in because they make insect jelly every once in a while. But they also do pop out insects like spilopedes and mega spiders, and we don't want to deal with those. Inside the ancient tome, there's a few really nice items that we can use. The first item being this tech print neural computation. Neural computation is a tech that's really far down in the tech tree. That's going to give us half completion towards that tech, and I believe it gives intellect a bunch of intellectual skill. And yeah, it just gave her, how much was that? 8k it actually didn't even say we completed any progress towards it so that might have been kind of a waste but intellect did get a bunch of intellectual skills so i guess that's nice we also picked up this psychic soothe pulser and if we activate this it's going to boost everyone's mood in the region for quite some time i guess it only lasts for 24 hours but i mean we could have sold it for the market value was 600 but probably only like 300 so whatever in the wee hours of the morning on day 15 we're getting attacked by some man hunting yaks four of them and these things actually might pose quite the challenge. What also does suck about this situation is it's foggy and that reduces the accuracy of range weapons. We loaded everyone up and we're moving our animals over here. I don't know if they're gonna fight. No, they're not gonna fight them, are they? I don't know why the infected arrow fleets aggroed on our donkey earlier, but yeah, these yaks are just going straight for our colonists. We brought pretty much everyone out here that can fight, but they're all pretty bad at fighting, except for shooting in stone. Stone was a wild female who we had to tame, and she ended up joining us after like the third taming attempt. She's got 10 shooting, so we gave her a recurve bow, and her in shooting should be able to do some work on these yaks, and hopefully they'll... Okay, they both missed their first shot. That's not good. I think we'll just have them run and try to get some distance. And we'll try to kite with some of our colonists. Like, crafting is a bit close. Oh, crafting got tagged. Maybe we'll have these four colonists 4v1 this yak over here. They should be able to take it on, maybe? I think kiting's the name of the game here. Because, yeah, we already took out one yak. And I was not kiting very well. Stone is getting tagged 2v1 by the yaks. And I think Stone got tagged by... Okay, Stone's down. One yak ended up going down though, and the other one went down too. There's only one yak left, and I'm hoping we can tag it from range. Okay, yeah, we got it. We should have been able to do this earlier, but I was just not very good at microing, and yeah, a bunch of people got hurt that didn't have to. And there we go, we got it down. And by the way, we didn't actually end up killing this yak, and it's a female. She's only got four hours to live though. It's gonna be hard to bandage her up. But if we can, this other yak that went down is a male, and it's not dead. We could potentially save both these yaks and tame them. They have a handling skill requirement of zero too, so it'd be really easy to do. But yeah, if we do tame them, we can breed them. Them, and I think you can milk yaks as well as I'm pretty sure you can like trim their coats for wool Unfortunately medical has food poisoning and that lowers her consciousness and manipulation by quite a bit So we're just gonna have cooking tend the wounded yak because cooking does have fibrous mechanites and his manipulation is actually way higher I think it's way better to have him tend even though he has zero medical and like yeah He already tended three wounds the yaks got five hours left Which is better than when we started when cooking started bandaging it had four hours and yeah, we're up to six hours now. So even though it is losing a lot of blood still, we are stopping a good amount of the bleeding and it looks like it's gonna survive. The other yak is now in no immediate danger. So yeah, it looks like we'll have two yaks that we can breed now. Anyways, with that, we're gonna be ending this episode. We do now have two research benches up because Stone actually has a burning passion for intellectual. If we have two researchers researching at once, then we'll start researching text double as fast, which is good because we really need to get out of this Neolithic age. We've researched pretty much every single Neolithic tech. The only one we haven't researched yet is Coco. Okay, so apparently since we're playing as a tribe, our tech level always stays Neolithic. However, there is a mod which, by the way, has a lot of great feedback where we can set a rule that if the player has researched more than 50% of the techs of a certain tech level, our tech level will rise to the next one. And yeah, now our tech level is medieval. I was wondering like what the heck was going on because I was literally researching every tech. And yeah, now our tech level is medieval. I don't even know if we want to finish Coco right now. We're going to start researching towards complex clothing now so we can start ditching our tribal wear. I was going to do Great Bow as it's a really long range bow but I think we can buy one from a nearby settlement. We'll be trying to do that in the next episode. I want to thank you all for watching, and I will see you then.